Hey, welcome back. So earlier this week, NASA announced the four astronauts heading to the moon as part of the Artemis II mission. And I'm sure you've heard one of those astronauts is Canadian Jeremy Hansen. Well, our colleague, Nicole Mortallero, got to sit down with Hansen to talk about space. So cool, right? So we caught up with her just before she left Houston, where she was at the NASA announcement. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Lauren. Thanks so much. I mean, this is so exciting to get to speak to you in Houston right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's been more than a half century since astronauts journeyed to the moon. Well, folks, that's about to change. The mission to the moon will launch four pioneers, but it will carry more than astronauts. Artemis II will carry the hopes of millions of people around the world. Well, tell me what it was like in that room. I mean, you've been covering science and space for so long. Like, tell me what it was like when this announcement was made. Sort of surreal, because not only have I been covering science and space, you know, as an adult, but as a kid, you know, I was absolutely enamored with space and the moon. And I had that picture of the earth rise on my wall growing up even into my teens. So standing there in a room full of all the active astronauts too, you know, was just surreal. And yes, I got teary eyed. <laughs> awesome. This is really just the beginning of a long plan, right? It's around the moon and then to the moon and then off to Mars is the plan. So how is that going to work really? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because in the like space community, there's been a long running joke that we've always been 30 years away from going to Mars. Um, and Mars really was the site for a lot of people. And liftoff of Artemis 1. So what the plan is, is, you know, Artemis 1 was the test, right, of the uh, rocket and the Orion capsule. Now Orion 2 will be humans on board testing all the components themselves and, and you know, coming back to Earth. And then Artemis 3 is going to be boots on the, the ground, right? I mean, this is incredible. But beyond that, there's Lunar Gateway. And Lunar Gateway is going to be the first space station orbiting the moon. And this is something that Canada has a, a, a stake in. We have Canada Arm 3. And that's going to be the jumping off point to go to the moon and to Mars. And it's just incredible. You know, Jeremy, you've covered Jeremy Hansen. You've covered uh, his what he's been doing for a long time. What do you think when you see him up there? Uh, it's, it's, I'm just thrilled for him. Honestly, um, I, I did later give him a big hug <laughs> because, um, I'm so happy. I've been following for 10 years. Um, and I'm just absolutely thrilled because it's, it took, it takes patience, right? He was, he was recruited in 2009 and I thought, of course, okay, yeah, he's going to go to the International Space Station, but never did I dream he would be going to the moon and he's going to be able to see earth Canada in a way that no Canadian ever has. I mean, you were recruited in uh, 2009 with David Saint-Jacques and you've had a lot of patience. <laughs> um, how, have there been any challenges for you over that time? Like, did you ever go, come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm human, of course. You know, you it always comes down to expectations, right? And so I think when I started the job, the expectation sort of was I would fly in five years and then that wasn't possible. It just, it wasn't gonna happen. It wasn't an opportunity for me to fly in that time frame. And then it was, you know, it just was always like a few more years away, always a few more years away. So you have to adjust your expectations, but it's all in your head. I mean, you, the other way to look at it is just like, wow, like, would I do anything else? Not a chance in the world. Like, I love what I'm doing. I'm working on an amazing team. I get these great, challenging experiences. You and I have talked about many of them over the years. You know, I, I lived in a cave. I lived on the ocean floor. I'm solving spacewalk problems with this team here on the ground, supporting fixing the alpha magnetic spectrometer. I mean, I've had some incredible experiences. And at the end of it all, I've always known I was going to fly in space. There's never, never anything that you know, was absolute. Um, you could lose your medical or whatever, but I've always known the, the intent was that I would find space. That's pretty special. I'm never going to take that for granted. What kind of training has he had to go through to get to this point? Yeah, um, he had training in the high Arctic, 
He uh, spent, um, I think it was seven days in a cave in Sardinia. Um, he spent another seven days or something like that uh, in an underwater habitat. Um, he has been doing a lot. He also trained the 2017 astronaut candidates, the first Canadian to do that for NASA. And he worked Capcom, the historic Capcom, um, and he's been doing a lot in preparation. It is not lost on any of us that the United States could choose to go back to the moon by themselves. But America has made a very deliberate choice over decades to curate a global team. And that, in my definition, is true leadership. This whole mission shows the cooperation of, you know, Canada and the U.S. And I mean, has Canada having that input in technology? Like, can you tell me what that really means to kind of have the two countries working together like this? You know, we've had a long-standing relationship, right? And, uh, you know, we were the third country after the Soviet Union in the U.S. to launch a satellite to space, and that was done on an American rocket. Then we had the Canadarm on the back of our $5 bill. And then we have Canadarm 2 on the space station and now Canadarm 3 on Lunar Gateway. But we've also sent instruments on rovers to, that are on Mars. Uh, we have a mission coming back with Cyrus Rex with Canadian technology that mapped an asteroid. You know, I don't think a lot of Canadians know how close that relationship has been and how much we've been contributing. Um, the contributions we are making as a country in the space program in general, they're pretty big and they're significant and they bring value. And so we're not done. That's what's important like to me. Like Artemis II is historic, it's going to be amazing, and it's just another step. And where are we going next? And let's set some bigger goals. I think space for a lot of people, like when we see a mission like this, it does kind of invoke this like feeling of inspiration and uh, hope and kind of like excitement. Seeing as you've covered this for so long, where do you think that kind of comes from, that like emotional response to it? I think down deep, first of all, we're explorers. We, we, we like to explore. Um, and then the other thing is it's bigger than us. It's so much bigger than us. So um, I'm gonna read you a quote um, that you, you had in a 2014 CSA video. And you said, for as long as I can remember, I was fascinated by space exploration. I looked at a photograph of Neil Armstrong standing on the moon, and I wanted to see what it'd be like to leave this planet, to look at it from beyond. I mean, have you really thought about that experience and what you might feel? Yeah, I, I can imagine it. I see it in my head, like looking through the windows of the Orion capsule, through the moon, back of the earth and uh, I, I can't wait to see it. I mean, I know it's gonna touch my soul. Uh, I'm gonna have like a tremendous perspective on this mission. And that idea ties in together with that being explorers because we wanna know what's out there. David Saint-Jacques has a wonderful way of saying this. I'm probably gonna ruin it, but he said, you know, um, and he has said this often that, you know, from the beginning, we wanted to know what was across that savanna, for example, as, as you know, then we wanted to know what's over that hill, and then we wanted to know what's over that mountain, and then we want to know what's across the ocean, and that is innate in us. And I think that's what it is. And like I said, that it's, it is bigger than us. And that's why science fiction, that's why, you know, it exists and, and people love it to this day. It's exploration and discovery. It's so exciting to watch. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time to walk us through that. And we'll definitely be following along. Thank you. Thank you for having me.